Okie dokie. Today we're gonna be reviewing Juvelin, which is an Intamin family launch coaster at Jur Summerland here in Denmark. This might be a family launch coaster, but it's only like borderline family. I think it's fine to call this a thrill coaster as well because it is one of the most thrilling coasters in Denmark. It's basically like a family friendly version of a blitz coaster with tire launches, I don't know. But overall, yeah, this is an ATV style motorbike launch coaster from Intamin. It is the longest roller coaster in Denmark and it's also one of my favorite coasters in Denmark. And today I'm gonna give you my overall review of how good it is. Last time I wrote it was last year in summer 2021. It opened back in 2013 and it was Denmark's first and still only double launch coaster. It's also the only double launch coaster I've ridden so far. It's 39.4 feet tall, it's 3280.8 feet long, exactly one kilometer, and it goes 52.8 miles an hour, which according to some sources is the fastest coaster in Denmark along with Piraten and Traukong, but according to the park themselves, Piraten is faster. However, that, that doesn't matter because in two months time we're gonna have Phoenix anyway and that's gonna be the fastest. This ride obviously has zero inversions. It's got nine rows with 18 seats and a total duration of 55 seconds, including both of the launches. As always, the first thing I want to note in my initial review of this coaster is how it looks. How is its appearance? I think Juvenile looks great. It's a beautiful coaster with a nice color scheme both on the cars and the track itself. And the way it goes low to the ground and zooms past all sorts of ruins and plants and water and shit is absolutely beautiful to look at. It's a great ride to watch off-ride. You can't see too much of it off-ride because it's on like the side of the path and it's pretty covered away some of it, but you can see most of it. And it's a great watch. Of course, the most essential part of this ride, and also what people in the rest of the world know this coaster for, is its layout. People know this coaster overseas because it's intense. It's a family launch coaster that's just much better looking than what they got over there. The layout begins with a pre-show that we will get into later, but for now, we start off with tire launch. Now, this tire launch is very slow and gradual. However, it still provides a solid push in your back. You definitely feel the acceleration get stronger and stronger throughout the launch and while it's not necessarily that strong because it feels relatively long it's still really fun after that you head into a turn which is not necessarily too intense but it's a good start to the ride and then you head up to into this massive camelback which is also the highest point of the ride now i just want to mention this right off the bat for the future as well None of the hills on this ride provide any noticeable airtime. There might be very, very, very weak floater in the back rows of some of the smaller ones, but you're gonna be off your ass to notice, and it's gonna be running warm. You should not expect any airtime at all on this thing. This is not what it's made for either, so it's not really a complaint, but still, I mean, it lacks it. But nonetheless, it then goes into the bottom of this valley where you get a little bit of push again into the forces. You have a slight overbank, which is fun and soothing. Then you get some of the more intense turns here at the end, which again aren't too intense, but they certainly have a bit more of a push into your seat off them. Then you get this funky, slightly lateral filled drop into the second launch, and this is where the ride really kicks off. The second launch is great. It's not anything compared to other double launch coasters around the world, I'm pretty sure, like Tauron for example. However, it still has a nice, solid and consistent push throughout the entire launch and this is just a point in time where I just love hanging my hands up in the air. Although I often hesitate whether or not I should do that because the element following this launch is probably the most nuts part of the ride. Right after the second launch, which again is really solid, it heads into this turn which is the most intense point of the ride. The twist itself into the turn is incredibly whippy and it's to the point where you really want to hold on to your restraint or the handlebar things. And the turn itself is also well filled with some positive forces. After that, you have some zigzags through these ruins, which also give some nice, smooth, and fun laterals and forces. These are more fast-paced, where the first turn is just really long and solid. These turns right here just keep providing a little bit of positive force throughout them while you also get those smooth and gradual laterals. This entire section is just super fast. It has some nice forces, but most of all, the transitions are just so fun. It is the best part of the ride, this entire section. After that, you go into this twisted bunny hill. Again, no airtime, but the transition just still feels really fun. You get a good positive fill turn here, then a 
break because there's no airtime here. Another positive fill turn and then you go into the finale which again is a little lackluster. This is more of like a Whoa! moment because there are no forces here. These two bunny hills obviously deliver nothing in regards to forces but the little valley in between them does push you into your seat so that is really nice. Then in the final turn you have a few good solid transitions left and then the turn itself also has some subtle positive forces. That is basically the ride itself. Now, in regards to forces, you can hear that it's not necessarily that impressive apart from one little section. However, it still manages to be incredibly fast and somehow all the transitions are just super fun despite maybe not being super intense because of how it feels, how you sit on the ATV cars. There's just something about this ride that makes it feel more intense than it actually is. But of course, I mean, it still has great positive forces. The pacing is just really good as well. It's a fun kind of pacing actually because the first half starts kind of slow but then it gets faster throughout the first half meaning that the pacing kind of gets better and in the second half it's just really fast until you hit these bunny hills and the finale where it gets kind of slow so the pacing is definitely not flawless but it is still pretty solid in regards to smoothness this ride is butter smooth there's nothing to pick on here it's just one of the smoothest coasters that i've ever ridden it's amazing and of course theming how is the theming well, the theming is really good. It's one of the better themed coasters in Denmark. I think it actually has my favorite theme on a coaster in Denmark. The station itself is a nice like Aztec temple with some nice theming here and there, some audio, some jewels around because that's what the name Juvelin means. It means the jewel. The station itself feels kind of epic. It's not a super detailed theme, but it is very fulfilling. And of course, there is the pre-show, which is also epic. There is a voice in the pre-show, which I mean, it's a little hard to hear what he's saying. Would you speak in the English? And that's not just because it's Danish and Danish is a fucked up language. Danish language has always been impossible to understand for most Scandinavians. But the reason, yes, it has been impossible to understand for us in Denmark too. <laughs> It's also just because the audio is kind of sad, but nonetheless, it's loud, the music is epic, and it really gets you pumped for that first launch. And honestly, the pre-show makes the first launch better because you're like, all right, let's go, let's fucking go. And then you go. The actual layout has very little actual theming, but the thing is, all of these plans, and then of course the water and the few ruins that I've also placed there are all part of the theming. You are in an Aztec sort of forest and you're in a landscape of some sort. You're driving on an ATV for God's sake. So nature itself here and of course along with the ruins are the theming and it's really great. It fits in so well. So I would really not say that this coaster is missing any theming. It's got it covered. It's great. My overall thoughts of Juvelin? It's a fantastic family coaster. It's just super fun. It's not insanely intense, but it does have intensity. It's butter smooth, it has really good theming, and of course, sitting on ATVs just makes the coaster feel so much more fun. I'd say that right now it is the second best coaster at Jer Summerland. Let me know what you guys think of you. Have you ridden it or do you want to ride it? Maybe you've ridden Yukon Quad. That's a clone of this in Le Paul in France. It's like a mirrored clone, it's kind of weird. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, it's been the rides of the North. And I'll see you forth. Bye.